Hi friends, today we're going to be looking at the artist Wayne Thaybod. Wayne Thaybod was a famous artist in the 60s that participated in the pop art movement. Pop artists loved to paint and make art of popular things that we would see in everyday objects. They challenged themselves to find ways to make their objects look interesting in their artwork. Can you find some ways that the artists have made these objects interesting? A lot of times Wayne would repeat his objects to add pattern, create some vibrant shadows, and paid attention to vibrant color with a neutral background so that the object stood out. Today we're going to be making a gumball machine inspired by Wayne the Thaybud's gumball paintings. Follow along my friends. Okay, friends, so today we're going to be making our Wayne Thaybud inspired gumball machines. First thing you're going to do is a big circle for the top. I also am going to make some little circles for the gumballs inside of the gumball machine. Now you can try to hand draw the circle on your own, but that can be a little tricky. So what I did is I went around my house and I found something um, that was circular. So I use this bowl, but you can use the top to any circle that you have. It's about the size of what you would need for the top of your gumball machine. And then for the gumballs, I found the perfect thing, a quarter, okay? So what I'm gonna do first is at the top of the page, I wanna leave a little bit of room. So I'm gonna take that object, and I'm using a marker, but you can use a pencil or a crayon, whatever you have at home. I'm making sure my paper is the long way, which is called portrait style, and I'm going around that shape to get my circle. Now what I'm gonna draw is a trapezoid, and a trapezoid has four sides. It's shaped with four sides. Two of those sides are parallel, and two of those sides have an angle. So I'm gonna show you right now how to do that. We're gonna do two angled lines that come out towards the corners at the bottom of the page. So I'm gonna go about right here on that circle and I'm gonna do an angled line that starts to go towards the direction of that corner, but I'm gonna stop because I don't wanna to go too far. Now I'm gonna do one on this side in about the same spot on the other side, but I wanna make sure this line is just as long as the one over here. So I'm gonna come over here, do a line that starts to head towards that corner, but it stops when it gets to about the same length. So you should have the same amount of room at the bottom. I'm now gonna do a straight line that connects those two diagonals. Perfect. Now what we're gonna do is a rectangle. So you're not gonna see the top of that rectangle, but I'm gonna do a line that comes down. And then over here, same thing, a line that comes down, make them the same length, and then a line that connects. Okay, if it looks more like a square, that's fine. Um, and then we're gonna do a circle in the center of this. So I'm just gonna hand draw this circle very slowly. This is going to be the piece that you would normally twist to get your gumball out. Or I guess the part that the gumball falls out of. And then above that, I'm gonna write 20, five, and then a set sign. Okay, so you're gonna do an angle from this corner on each side that goes to the bottom of your bottom line. So find a corner, angle line meets the bottom. Find the corner, angle line meets the bottom. So you can kind of see that trapezoid in there. So, all right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to put some designs in our um, gumball machine. Now, a lot of times a gumball machine, you might see that bright red color, but if you wanna add a pattern in yours or repeated line, just to make it a little different and extra special, you can. So for mine, I'm gonna just go in with a marker and add some wiggling lines to add some extra detail and pattern in mine. It's gonna make my coloring take a little longer, but that's okay with me. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm gonna go and start to do the top of my gumball machine. I'm gonna do a line that goes across. And then I'm gonna do just a little circle at the top to look like the lid, okay? Now, inside I'm gonna start to put my gumball. So I have my 
quarter and I'm just gonna start to trace it. I'm starting with the curve at the bottom because we need to make it look like there's some gumballs that are holding at the bottom. They wouldn't be floating in midair. So I'm gonna start to go around and trace this very slowly, holding it down with one finger as I trace. So go ahead. You don't have to do a whole lot of these. It depends on how full you want your gumball machine to do. But you're gonna go ahead and start to draw those circles in there. If you don't have a quarter at home, you can try to hand draw them. The quarter, the quarter just gives me that perfect circle. So go ahead and do that, friends. All right, friends, so I have my drawing done. Now I'm gonna to start to color, and I want you to really think about our coloring skills. Remember those things that I teach you, go in multiple directions, okay? Outline the shape before you fill it in. So I'm gonna get a crayon and I'm gonna pick a shape, maybe this circle right here. I'm gonna go around it first. Now also remember that trick, when you have a round object like this, sometimes if you go in circles instead of straight up and down lines, the circles make it easier for you to stay in the lines. But if I have something that has is a flat shape and not rounded, like this square piece right here, then sometimes it's easier not to go in circles. So try in different directions, outline first, just make sure that you are staying in the lines, getting all those white areas, play a game of I Spy. Remember, that's our favorite game in art, I Spy. After you've got it colored in, do you spy any areas that maybe you could go back in on top of? So it's gonna take you a while to get all the detail and all the colors in there. You don't have to color this part here. This is the clear part of the gumball machine, but you want to color the bottom of the gumball machine, the gumballs, and this little top piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll show you when I'm done with it. Remember friends, slow and steady wins the race. If you're doing this at home, keep in mind that in the classroom we spend a few days on this, so it's okay to take a break if you need one. Please don't rush. All right, friends, so I got my piece all colored in. I filled on all the white spaces except for the areas between my gumballs inside the circle and the background. Now, when you go to do the background, you can do whatever you want. You can draw a pattern in the background and make it look like you have wallpaper. You can do that little trick I showed you before where you use the edge of the crayon very lightly and you color the background in. The only thing that you want to make sure you do is in order to make it look like this bulb is clear, you're going to want to make sure whatever you do in this negative space, your background right here, that you also do that inside around the area around your circles, okay? So like in this little spot here, I've got a little space. I would have to make sure whatever I do in the background matches that and you might have to be very slow and careful to color these little areas in. Now what I'm going to be doing for mine, if you have these things at home, I think it's the easiest way to do this, is called a monoprint. And a monoprint is when we print something but we can only print it once. So what you will need for this is some kind of washable marker. I use Mr. Sketch, okay. Foil and water and a sponge any kind of sponge you have at home okay so what you have to do first is get a piece of foil and trim it down to the size of your paper so you might need parent a parent's help for that um, most of us have foil at home so we should be able to do this what you're gonna do is get some water I'm just gonna put some in a bowl and we don't want to get the sponge too too wet so I'm going to dip it in just a little bit of water and squeeze the sponge about twice before I start to add the water on my paper. So using sponge, I'm going to glide that moist sponge across the paper. Now because I used crayon, the water is not going to react with that crayon. But if you colored in your um, piece with a washable marker, you're going to end up getting um, some smears. So this wouldn't be good either if you use washable markers when coloring. Okay. 
Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to have the colored side because I already colored my whole foil up one side of it with marker and I make sure to cover as much as I can. Flip it down so that the marker side is not showing and very slowly I'm going to press and rub the whole thing very gently. I'm just going to rub along it and what's going to happen is it's going to transfer onto my paper and it's going to look like watercolor. Now if you have watercolors at home and you'd rather paint on here, that's fine. Again, I'm just trying to show us different things to do at home with the things that we have. So now I'm going to pull that off. What? Really cool rainbow effect now. So you don't have to do the same colors as me. But now you can see how the background matches the part inside the globe so that it looks see-through.